So for my literary analysis, I picked the story Evelyn from the um, Dubliners short stories by James Joyce. And for my summary, I said that um, it was a young woman named Evelyn Hill that's faced with an overwhelming decision of running away with her lover, Frank, to Buenos Aires or continuing her mundane life in Ireland with her father. On the eve of her voyage with Frank, Evelyn begins to reflect on her life and imagine how things would carry on without her. She becomes overwhelmed by the idea of learning a new way of life and is hesitant towards leaving. Although she knows that Frank will provide her with the life she deserves when boarding the ship to sail away with her bo from her bothersome life towards something extraordinary, fear takes over her senses and she is unable to leave. Um, one of the literary devices that I found was symbolism. And the quote that I used for this was, All the seas of the world tumble about her heart. He was drawing her into them. He would drown her. And the sea in the story is seen as a way to escape burdens of Evelyn's life. And although she finds great promise and opportunity in the waters, she also finds it unnerving. And that it holds a certain unknown faith that scares her. And the author uses this device to explain the complexity of Evelyn's opportunity to leave. And what it could potentially hold for her. Um, another device I found was imagery and the quote that I found for this was her eyes gave him no sign of love or a farewell or recognition and um, I said that this use of imagery helps to describe the depths of Evelyn's fear of the unknown and about how she was so paralyzed by her emotions that she was unable to think rationally and she was almost in a zombified type state and um, the author uses this to explain the reader's effects of the extreme weight of the decision and how it came between her and someone that she loved, altering her thoughts and causing her to behave in an irrational manner. Another device I found was a simile, and um, the quote is, She set her white face to him, passive, like a helpless animal. And this simile is used to help further describe her um, ongoing internal conflict, and it helps um, the reader to kind of visualize how Evelyn re like interacts with other people with all of this like emotion she's dealing with because the entire story is basically just her talking about her feelings and her thoughts and reflecting on her past and flashbacks and stuff. And the only time that she really has character interaction that's in the present is whenever um, she's with Frank waiting to sail away to Argentina. And it shows how extremely overcome she is with all these emotions, how she can barely even function. And she's so tied down by this past that she's unable to let go of it and build her future. And the past is a reoccurring theme in this story because the whole story is basically about like her thinking about her past. And about how she's afraid to leave Ireland and all she's ever known. Another device I found is repetition, and the quote is Still they seemed to have still they seemed to have been rather happy then. Her father was not so bad then, and besides, her mother was still alive. So then repeats throughout this quote, and it helps to allude towards the idea that Evelyn's life is significantly worse now, and that she used to have it better whenever her mother was alive and her life's pretty much kind of falling apart and it shows how like Ireland holds nothing for her but for some reason she still wants to stay there because it's all she's ever known and um it ties heavily into the recurring theme of the past and then my text to self-reference um all my life I've been really bad at making decisions and I get so caught up in the what-ifs and the like weighing my options and the outcomes of what could happen and um i relate deeply to how she feels and about how indecisive she was throughout the story and even though i cannot relate to her life and how she has an abusive father who's an alcoholic and how she has to take care of her younger siblings and go out and buy food for the family and spend money on her family and well not spend money on her family but like all her money goes towards buying food for her family. Like, I can't relate to that, but I do kind of somewhat understand how she's feeling. Even though it might be not be to the same extent, I still can relate to it in a way. 
and um, my text to text reference, I related it to Araby from James Joyce also. And in that story, it's the main character is desperate to um, break free from his mundane life, just like um, Evelyn is. She wants to leave Ireland and he wants to break free of his life and be with the girl of his dreams, but they're both caught up in everything and they both end up in situations that strip them of their comfort and they find themselves at their weakest point. And like in Araby, um, he's at the end of it, it talks about how um, gazing up into the darkness, I saw myself as a creature driven by um, vanity and my eyes burned with anguish and anger. And at the end of Evelyn, she's paralyzed and she can't even go away with her love of her life. And so they both end up in pretty rough situations at the end. And then um, my textual world reference is, so Evelyn is going to leave Ireland to go to Argentina with Frank. And this reminds me of the show 90 Day Fiancé on TLC because um, it's all these Americans, they fall in love with people from other countries, like over the internet and stuff. And these people from the other countries have 90 days to come to America on a K-1 visa to get married. And um, in many cases, like the couples end up falling apart because the people who have to travel to America, like they become just like Evelyn was, they're afraid to leave their country and all they've ever known and their families. And they don't know what America can hold for them. Just like Evelyn doesn't know what Argentina could hold, it could be really good or it could be really bad. And they just, they're so overcome with all of the factors that go into making the decision that they're unable to go through with the marriage, just like Evelyn was unable to go through with getting on the boat to sail away. And they have to sacrifice their love because of the fear. And in the setting, Evelyn was set in Dublin, Ireland, and just like all the other Dublin, Dubliners, whatever. But um, for the most part of the story, she's in a room thinking about her life and reflecting on her past and everything. And um, it ends with her on a boat dock. And then the room represents her depressing life, pretty much, and how pretty bland and boring and harsh her life is in Ireland, but she still finds it familiar and comforting. And then the boat dock represents her opportunity for a better life with Frank. And although it is exciting and inviting, she's also afraid of what the unknown brings. And then, um, so Dublin, Ireland in the early 1900s was a place of growing poverty. And the country was under British rule and endure, uh, endured a really huge labor dispute. And this made... Um, massive labor unions and violence and unemployment throughout Ireland and people were starving and then um, this was towards the end of the British rule and then even though it was coming to a close there was like a 10-year period of political unrest in which Ireland couldn't break free but then they finally did and became independent. Some of my favorite quotes, um, I don't know how to pronounce it but it looks like Duravon Saran, Duravon Saran and this is what Evelyn's mother says on her deathbed. And it means at the end of pleasure, there is pain. And I think that this could be a warning to Evelyn. And she reflects on this quote whenever she's like about to leave with Fr or Frank. And um, I think that she's... Because she could have a life of great pleasure. And she could have a really great life in Argentina with Frank. But like this quote that her mother said, it says that at the end of this pleasure there is pain. So she's afraid of what Argentina could hold for her. Because if she um, gives in to this pleasure and like she could be kind of I don't know, messing herself up in the end. But then another one of my quotes was all the seas of the world tumbled about her heart he was drawing her into them, he would drown her. And I like this quote because it shows how complex her feelings are towards Frank. And I feel like it could show maybe um, 
some trust issues that she might have because throughout the story it talks about how her dad um he beat her older brothers and her mom and but he'd like always stay away from her because she was a young girl but it said that towards like now that she was getting older her father started kind of coming after her and I think that maybe she might be afraid of Frank maybe a little bit and this is all because of experiences in her past and like she loves him and everything but she's afraid of what could happen with him and then another quote was she set her white face to him passive like a helpless animal her eyes gave him no sign of love or farewell or recognition and this quote is interesting because it shows how like paralyzing her thoughts were and her emotions and how even though she's leaving like She's standing on a dock with someone who she loves dearly, but she's so overcome by these emotions that she's unable to even show him any sort of recognition. Like, she's unable to talk to him, to show her love and express her feelings towards him, because she's just, like, there. She's just overwhelmed with everything. And, um... Some unique discoveries. Buenos Aires at the time of the early 20th century was a place of great economic opportunities, so it was pretty booming, and Frank wanted to take her there because of that. And then in the story, um, she discusses the color print of the promises made to Blessed Mary, Mar Margaret Mary, Alacoque, and it hangs on the wall of their home. And this lady is a Roman Catholic nun who promoted modern devotion to the heart of D Jesus. And this relates towards um, Evelyn's religious background because towards the end of the story she's praying to God to give her guidance and what decision to make and then Evelyn describes a play that Frank takes her to called the Bohemian Girl and whenever I researched this it was a ballad opera about a band of gypsies that capture and hold a nobleman's daughter which was interesting in my final analysis I didn't hate the story but at the same time I didn't really love it it wasn't something that I would read over and over again or maybe even come back to <laughs> but it was interesting and it kept me captivated the entire time that I read it because I wanted to know what was going to happen next. And um, I found it interesting, like, how the author dove into her mind and the complexity of her emotions and the um, literary devices that he used really helped to convey that to the reader. And then um, at the beginning of the story, I found it kind of boring. She was just talking about her past and everything. But once it got towards the decision and um, what weight it carried in her life, I found it to be, like, really interesting from that point on. And um, after reading the story, I'd like to know how Evelyn and Frank ended up. Like, did he send her a letter from Argentina? Did they ever see each other again? How was Evelyn after he left? Like, I have so many questions. And I would like to know more. And then on a scale of 1 to 10, I would rank it around 7 because it's really interesting and a good story. And then um, I found the story to be extremely character oriented and it allows the reader to look inside of her mind to truly understand how she's feeling and the struggle that she faces. And it overall creates an extremely understandable character for the audience to relate to because it's not really dialogue and her life and everything like it's just like you're like looking into Evelyn's mind and I found that to be really cool the end